talking now about translation, so rigid body translation out of chapter 16. So if we start with an axis system, here's a rigid body, call this point A, this one point B. We can locate point A and B with position vectors. Now I'm going to go ahead and use the relative notation that we're going to use kind of consistently here in uh, chapter 16. So we could write this as R of A relative to O and this as R of B relative to O. Now since point O is not moving, technically these are absolute vectors. Um, absolute because they're not um, relative to a moving point. And then we could put a third vector here, R of A relative to B. Um, one technique that I hope that you're picking up um, through the semester here is the ability to take a look at this vector triangle and basically write a corresponding equation to this vector triangle. Okay, so one thing we'll notice is that we add together R of A relative to O plus R of A relative to B, right? So R of A relative to B plus R of A relative to O. These are both vectors. They get us to the exact same place that R of B relative to O as well, right? So if we highlight... R of B relative to O is this one here. Um, and like I said, this is a technique that is really valuable to us also in dealing with relative um, velocities, which were on the last quiz. Go away, there we go. So essentially, the blue vector and these two yellow vectors adding together get us to the same place the same tail to the same tip. Okay, you should be able to interpret those back and forth. They're basically showing the same information. All right, so just like in chapter 12, in relating position, we're going to take a time derivative to get to velocity. Okay, so if we take a time derivative, which is ddt of each one of these terms, basically our, our time derivative of our absolute position vector becomes the velocity I'll go ahead and put this in absolute terms. V of B equal to the velocity of A. And then we have, all right, this is the time derivative, the D of R of A relative to B as a vector, DT. What is the time rate of change? of this red position vector, A relative to B, right? So when I ask that question, remember there's really two questions embedded in it. The two questions is what's going on with the time rate of change of the length, what's going on with the time rate of change of the direction. Let's start with the length, that's the easy one. Is there a time rate of change of the length of that vector between A and B? No, why not? They're on the same body, right? A and B are on this rigid body which is not gonna stretch or compress, and so that distance will not change. And if we are looking purely at translation, right? So if we, let's just pick out, um, say, a path of this is a linear path. It doesn't really matter if it's horizontal or vertical. I put it at an angle here. So we can say the velocity is along that path. Will there be a time rate of change of the angle of that position vector? There's not, right? Because in translation, there's no omega. There's no time rate of change of the angular position. And so this entire vector goes to zero because R of A relative to B vector does not change magnitude nor direction. So 
so because of that, we end up with VB I wrote the wrong, let's see, what did I do? Oh, I forget what I did. Let me finish this. VB is equal to VA. Did anybody pick up an error that I have on my page so far? It has to do with uh, a relative notation. Yeah, it should be B relative to A instead of A relative to B, right? Because it's always the vector that you're pointing at from the vector you're pointing, you're coming from. So I just saw this myself here, but this should be B relative to A. The reason I saw it is I noticed here in my relative motion equation that my subscripts didn't cancel. And I was like, there's eh, something, something broken there. Um, so if we change this to B relative to A, then my A's will cancel and I get kind of B relative to my origin uh, for both of those. Let me fix it here as well, B relative to A. Not intentional that I made that error. Sometimes, every once in a while I make intentional errors. That one, I just wrote the wrong, uh, the wrong slash or the wrong term. Um, same justification though that, um, I guess to make this totally correct, we can write this as B relative to A. Doesn't change um, the magnitude and the direction. Don't change. And we still end up with our relationship here that the velocity of B equals the velocity of A. And that if we take another time derivative, we can end up with the acceleration of B equal to the acceleration of A. And these are vectors. So to put a little statement here, we can say um, for rigid body translation, It's going to be three different points we can make about rigid body translation. One of those is that the velocity v and the acceleration a are the same for every point on a rigid body. Which is the reason that for the first half of our dynamics class, we've called so many things particles because essentially every single point on those bodies had the same velocity and the same acceleration. So we called cars particles, we called boxes particles, we called crates particles, we called um, cars on a roller coaster particles, right? All these different things that really weren't particles, we called particles because their velocity and acceleration every single point on those bodies was exactly the same because they weren't rotating is really the detail of why that's true. And so let's put that down here as number two get into, for a rigid body translation, we can say that our omega, which is our angular velocity, is equal to zero, and our alpha, which is our angular acceleration, is also equal to zero. And so the last statement we can make that kind of brings things together is basically saying that because these things are true, the equations we use for particles, we can use the same equations for rigid bodies in translation, okay? So can use same equations as for particles. Which once again, flipping this sentence around is basically saying we can treat any non-rotating body as a particle. Another way we could say that. Questions on translation. So the question was is how we kind of what R vector we pick to relate things. So it's really saying that as long as we pick two points on a rigid body, it doesn't matter if it's the centroid, the far corners, wherever it is, that that R vector between any two points is not going to change in, in length and is not going to change in direction. Therefore, those two points that we pick will have the same velocity and the same acceleration. 
So it's really to say if you can find the velocity acceleration of one point on a translating body, then you know the velocity acceleration of every other point all around that one.